<laughs> well, it's a longer story. Today was a rough go, but, um, you know, we know how that turned out. And then came down here. Uh, I was just with the mayor um, and, and family members. We did the wreath lane for mm. the marathon. And yeah. now I get a chance to come see you. So happy Patriots Day. Yeah. I mean, it's such an incredible day in the city. And I think finally, like, spring has sprung and we're going to have beautiful weather. And this day, I think, means a lot for everybody. Uh, because of what happened here and the way the city has come back from that kind of collectively. So. Totally. It's a, you know, it, it's always so poignant, right? It doesn't, I mean, here we are 11 years uh, since the anniversary, 128th running of this event. Um, it's a story of strength and resilience. Every single runner here today has a story. I mean, it's incredible, right? Who they're running for, what cause they're running for. Um, so many stories. There's so much power in this. I think back 11 years ago, I mean, um, it, it still rings true to, to all of us, right, who were in the city um, and, and took that in. And we think about the victims. We think about the survivors. So many survivors who continue to live with injuries and, and trauma. Um, we think about the first responders, the bravery, people in our hospitals who save lives and limbs. And, you know, it's it's uh, incredibly sad. It's also uh, incredibly uh, poignant and I think like life affirming, right? Like so many acts of heroism and so much resilience um, through the years. And I just feel like today is a day where we should be celebrating that, right? I mean, we did the wreath lane. It's important to have those moments of somber right and reflection it's also i hope a day that people can like rally for a greater cause and a common cause right and like yeah this is who we are you know and this is what we're about and as I know, a people as always on this there's a lot going on in the world uh and i know as always kind, of just, <laughs> <laughs> kind of just oh. kind of just that message from the 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 police and from from you guys just to be vigilant and not not to be worried about things here today but just in general to if you're coming down and watching the marathon anywhere to just look around and be careful yeah you know if you want if you want any information about the actual race how to watch the routes road closures go to the baa website of course but you know we've got nearly 50 agencies state local and federal coordinating for this event they all do a fantastic job. We expect to have a fantastic day here uh, and a safe day here. It's going to be a little warm, so, you know, the medical tent we know can <laughs> make yeah, you a little yeah. bit more action. Yeah. Nice for the rest of us, yeah, though, it right? Is, yeah, it's great. Yeah, great. Yeah, it is, Hang yeah. outside, have yeah. a burger and a beer. Yeah, it's it great. great. It is great. But the poor runners, God bless them. Um, but honestly, it, it should be a great day. A lot of people, the BAA, all the, all the volunteers, amazing. Yeah. Thousands of volunteers. And, again, to me, it's just part of, like, these are moments that as a city, state, country, we should just like feel so good about, right? No matter, you know, where you're coming from or your views, it's like let's let's at least unite around this. This is a awesome day. Um and, and we should we should celebrate that. Speaking of important moments, there's one coming up in, in less than two months for Tom Brady. We've talked to you a lot about any idea. Is the state going to do, I mean, you're going to name the airport. Curtis wants the airport name Brady International. Brady International. <laughs> have, you, have you decided, have you, have you talked at all about what the state is going to do on June 12th for Tom Brady? Oh, I can't, I can't reveal. Can't okay, reveal we really, yeah. I, okay. I take any ideas, though. All right. Tom like Brady the, International Airport. I mean, I, don't, I, I mean, mean, I'm sure Logan is a fine person. Yeah, but General, yeah. General Logan. General Logan's yeah. had a, a pretty long run He's here. had a yeah. run, right? Yeah. And, and who brought more touchdowns? Yeah. To touchdown at Logan with yeah. Tom Brady International. Yeah. I like that. Curtis, that's a good it's a really one. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, Air, that's airing bad. it out. Yeah. Airing it out. I love that. That's my okay. moonshot. Okay. 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 Did, did you watch, we'll take that back. Did you watch Dynasty at all? I'm sure you're busy, but did you get a chance to watch Dynasty on Apple? No, no. Um, a, a couple. I, I watched one episode. Yeah. Um, I read a lot about it. What'd you think? Um, you Wiggy, didn't miss Wiggy, anything. what'd you think? I thought it was an absolute uh, uh, crap huh? show. You didn't miss anything good except you, for the okay. first couple episodes. It was kind of like yeah. kicking Bill Belichick yeah. on the way out. Yeah. Is what, what we yeah. kind of thought. Every former um, player hates it. We you had the writer what? and director here. It went really well. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know what? We lived it. We saw it. So yeah. I don't need yeah. to go watch it. Yeah. You know, we all the have point. our we all have our memories in in, in that time. Right? Now this came up earlier. I don't want to jinx anything, but will you be playing? Planning some kind of a, a duck boat uh, parade, perhaps right down in this area for your beloved Celtics. Are you this... kidding? Are you out of your freaking mind? For bringing that, not don't don't even mention, don't even say, don't no. say. It. Okay, all right, I won't even, no. I won't even say anything. Go about seas. It. Okay, all right, go, go, go seas, go bees. You like that? You like this team though, right? Team's great. Yeah. I mean, didn't they? They great pieces they brought together this year. You know, it was so funny watching the other night. 
It's like you didn't you didn't recognize anybody on the floor, right? I mean, they they brought the guys up from down from Maine mm-hmm. G League. I mean, and still dominated. So yeah. they're super fun to watch. They're selfless. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's like just mental toughness down the stretch, right? So yeah. let's. Um, I think they've got all the ingredients there, and I'm 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 psyched for it. I wanted to ask you about a topic that comes up a lot on the show, and I know you've been dealing with it for a while here. You, uh, you've called it a uh, you declared a state of emergency when it comes to what's going on with the migrant situation, uh, a crisis. Um, where currently are you at on uh, working through that? Because yeah. I think it's it's mm-hmm. been, you know, I, I think everybody, I, I, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to offer, offer the opportunity for those who are not here in America to come here. Um, but also I think a lot of people look at an incredible burden that is being placed on the state um, and how do we deal with that as a state going forward? Greg, I'm really glad you asked the question because let me, you know, let me say something to listeners. Um, we got a problem with the border. We've got a problem with a broken immigration system, right? And, like, Congress should have acted on that decades ago. Fix it, right? Make it tighten up asylum, tighten up the border, get more assets and, and agents and resources to the border, right? Um, we got we got to reform that system. And then we have this issue that's come up in the last year and a half where we see people fleeing all sorts of like horrific stuff um look at haiti you know and they're just like trying to find a way to save their kids and and build a better life and and those are new immigrants who've come and yeah they come into the country they actually come here lawfully you know so there's a distinction between those who come here illegally and those who come here lawfully the problem i have is that many of them are coming here and I understand it. You'd probably do anything you could for your family, right? I mean, these are people escaping rape and assault and gangs and just stuff. Um, they come here, and the federal government, you know, at first wasn't going to let them work, which is insane. And I said, no, let's get them working. So now I've gotten them all pro- or working through, more than 3,000 of them processed for work, and they're filling jobs right now that we need in restaurants, in hospitalities, you know, settings, you know, in hospitals, in nursing homes. You know, and that's, they're going to be able to support their kids. They're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, sustain themselves. And, and that's a good thing. But I just, you know, the, the blame here, Greg, is with Congress. And they're just failure Both to Both sides. Both sides over yeah. years. Yeah. I mean, most recently there was a deal on the table. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately it, it went by the wayside um, when, you know, Republicans refused to to get it done because Donald Trump said no don't no deal before the election. So you know, it, but it's a longer standing problem, right? And I continue to ask for money from the federal government um, for help. Because we're I, ki- we're kind of running out. I mean, I, I you know, it's over a billion dollars. I think there are you know, as 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 taxpayers, yeah. um, I think we sometimes look and say, I wish that money. You know, if we had endless amounts of money, then it should go to everybody that it could go to. But I wish it went at times to some of our veterans, you know, who are It does. Let me clarify. So it's not quite a billion dollars, but what it is is, you know, it's several hundred million dollars that we estimate at this point. But, you know, more than half the families that we're paying for are Massachusetts families. That's more the reality. Than half. More than half right now still. You know, we all know people who've come on hard times, right? Something's happened, somebody got sick, somebody lost a job. So the money that we're talking about or you hear talked about in the news, more than half of that's going to Massachusetts families, you know, who are vulnerable and without a house right now, including veterans. I've got a new program on veterans um, homelessness prevention. We're doing a lot there. We just opened brand new homes in Chelsea and Holyoke for our veterans. Uh, really proud of that. We've got to do everything we can to take care of our veterans and those who serve. But, you know, it, it, it definitely puts some, put some strain, right, on, on things. And, you know, I didn't expect us to have, as a state, there's a law that says we're required to house people here, okay? So I'm just enforcing, yeah. I mean, I'm just following the law here. Could you, but uh, could you change some, that? Could well, you change no. that with executive order? No, the legislature can. I, okay. I've done what I can. Remember, I recently said people who come, you've got 30 days. You've got to register. You've got to show that you're applying for work authorization, that you're getting a job, that you're taking English classes, right, like that you're looking for housing. Um, that's something that I imposed, and I've advocated for shorter timelines on it so there's shorter terms to stay, and really working with our service providers, you know, to get people processed so that they can be out of shelter and on their own. You know, um, every 
you know, it, we want we want self-sustaining and resilience for people. And, you know, honestly, uh, the people I talk to, the immigrants who come under these circumstances, a lot of them come from Haiti because we get a huge Haitian population here in Boston. Mm. That's why they're coming yeah. to Boston. And, you know, they're trying to get relocated with family or relatives. And, you know, that's that's what we want to see. Uh, they all want to work. And that's why I'm getting them work permits. They're going to be working and they're going to be filling jobs that we need filled, you know, right yeah. now. Yeah. So, you know, I understand people's concern out there. I'm also just trying to, you know, say it straight about what's really happening. Because, you know, there's, when you talk about this issue, I mean, people's emotions, you know, yeah. people get really... In, exercised about it right yeah. and, and frustrating there's and there's some misconceptions about what's what's yeah. going on here well, so I, it's it's really good to have you clear them up because we taught we end up talking about it a lot um and i think it's something that's on uh, that that is on the minds of of a lot of people who are looking around and saying listen i i think you know you talk a lot about the mbta you talk about a lot of things that need funding and and talk about when it comes to tax receipts they're you know not always going in a in the up direction um and i'm sure that's something that's on your mind too is looking around and how do you get people back to work here in the city and these businesses back to yeah to i mean and part of this goes you got immigrants working you know those are going to be businesses that are going to be able to do more business frankly because you know i talk to any employer around everybody's hurting for workers right now so let's plug them in there um i'd love to see more people downtown you know back to work bring the vibrancy back downtown boston we need that i applaud and i support the companies and there have been many lately who are bringing people back into the office, you know. And I think most people find out. I mean, sure, it's been good to have some flexibility. Um, child care issues, right? I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's, um, and look, traffic is lousy. I'm going to, you know, it, it's yeah. tough, right? I'm working yeah. on it. I inherited kind Can of a mess fix, here. Yeah, yeah well, we're working on it. You know, this guy that. Phil in who's in charge, <laughs> yeah. he's, honestly, it's going to take some time because this system was underinvested in and mismanaged for, for years and years. But Wiggy you know, is still, he's caught up a little bit in that no tax whatsoever. Yes, make thing. us like New Hampshire. He wants no, he wants no taxes. No state well, taxes. I don't know what can we do there? That's going to be you his platform. That? It if works he runs. in New Hampshire. <laughs> I grew up in New Hampshire. Yeah, and it works well. <laughs> well, you don't... You, well, lower lot of, it. <laughs> I, hey, I just did. Wiggy, I cut yeah. your taxes this year. I was the first time in over 20 years. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So, I was the first right. governor in over 20 years to cut taxes. Taxes in this state, a billion dollar tax cut. I know you're like looking uh -huh. at me like, really? Did you so, do that? So wait a second. Yeah, so the Democrat. Five, so for five yeah. percent, where'd I go to? Well, we're working that. You know, we weren't, did you we, lower it to like three and a we half? We weren't able to deal with income tax. I'll <laughs> tell right. you that. Oh, but so we, that's I what up, I'm looking for. I know. I grew up in New Hampshire, though. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of services and resources that we get here in Massachusetts that I, we didn't get in New Hampshire because the only thing fun in anything in New Hampshire is your property tax. Mm hmm and property taxes are high. Are so, high, right? Yeah. You know, there's more work to do on tax reform in the state. But when I started as governor, I said, I want to make the state more affordable, more competitive, more equitable. And getting that tax cut um, was a big thing. You got any seniors in your house? Uh, no, unfortunately. Just whenever Greg comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, wait, wait a minute. Well, we just I, doubled the tax credit they're going to get. Twenty four hundred dollars back in the pocket of seniors. Uh, by the way, I, I have a giant thank you. And the estate get, tax uh, too. My mother lives with me. Can I use that now? I mean, she's gone. She's gone on up to the upper room. But can I use the fact that she lived with me? Oh, <laughs> no, maybe, you can't. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Although um, she probably claim you as a dependent, though. You never get old. Uh, believe me, You're still a kid. I, I haven't thanked you yet, but uh, when I was. In high school, uh, at Neshoba Regional High School, 1985, uh, I was arrested for possession of a Class D substance. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked. Uh, started me down the wrong... The Courtney wrong shot. Oh, start. yeah, you should see the mugshot. <laughs> Something is special. In, in Clinton, Massachusetts, 1985. I believe I have now been officially pardoned by you. By me. Is that, all right. Good job. Okay. All right. Thank you. God. That's off, that is off, clean yeah, off my record. That's off my record. Now you can go to college. That's, that is off my record. It's really held you back, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did for a little while, but I, I overcame. Is circling it's, back to the, um, to the traffic quickly, the bike lane, bus lane situation, do you think we may have gone overboard? I don't know. I, I mean, I think that's for the city to decide and people in the city to decide. Honestly, you know, I got to think about the whole state and getting, um, getting, you know, the subway up to where it needs to be or commuter rail, um, building out new infrastructure, bridges, roads, you know, up to repair. But, you know, I know that's caused some issues for folks. So I think I, I think as a general matter, we should be opening. We should always be open to re looking at something. Right. You know, if it's not working, then make an adjustment. Right. Yeah. I have a yeah. question on that, Governor. Just on the the specific. I'm not a green guy. I applaud everybody who wants to, the Earth to be better. Do you have a but bike? 
I do not have a bike. No. I walk I walk around. But is there ever the calculus of what gridlock does for the environment caused by decreased traffic lanes? In other words, if everybody was going to work at 30 miles an hour, it would be better for the environment than having everybody just stalled on Summer Street in South Boston. Yeah. Do, do we not? Because I feel like that's an easy thing to understand, but I'm not as smart as many people. But I seem to understand that. Why, why can't we grasp that and not go all into this Copenhagen style of city planning. <laughs> Have you been over there? I am not. Uh, Marty Walsh used Marty to come Walsh on used and to go, talk a lot he to about, Copenhagen. about Copenhagen. Well, there's a, there's a lot of things to love about yes. Copenhagen. I hadn't yeah, thought of it. Yeah. Um, you know, when they, they, they do do that calculus, right? But I think one thing with all this stuff is like, they're trying to incent us to get out of our cars, right? Use right. your bike, use a different mode of transportation. But if that's not happening, then you end up with, you know, more numbers and, and more gridlock, which is yeah. why you're always going to be prepared to, to make an adjustment, right? Yeah. Especially when yeah. it snows here. Like, there's months where nobody's going to really take a bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I'm sure you have official duties. Uh, what do you do have? I? Do you have to? Well, do you have to? I don't know. Do you oh yeah, to? I, I crown the winner. I yeah, crown the, crown. I crown the male winner. Yeah. yeah okay. So you crown yeah. them, and that's like I was a, so nervous last year. It was my first year. Yeah. And they give you, they they give you the crown, right? Yeah. It's like the Roman, the you know, the the, the leaves, right? And, yeah. And it's like they're all gold leaf, and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna break this. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, you then, and then and then they like, tell me to put it on the head, and you know these guys are so trim, right? It's like yeah. the little head, and I'm yeah. just like, oh my god, I'm gonna like. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> you don't. Because yeah. then he's got to go stand. It's like, oh my god, I yeah. want to put it on the right way yeah. so it doesn't fall off. So you practiced, I'm assuming. No, no, yeah. okay. So no, I was no, just winging it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. how Greg gets his ratings bonuses from Ken. <laughs> 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 um, I have one more for you. Uh, since we're we're asking tough questions, and I you, you I know you I, you can can't comment specifically about things, but I want to ask you as the former attorney general for this state, tomorrow the Karen Reed trial begins. Um, are, are you going to be watching that from your perspective? I think it's very interesting. There's a real a lot of interest in the case and a, a you know considerable amount of people who are uh, concerned a little bit about kind of the way our, uh, our, our policing and our justice system works. Are you going to be paying attention to that in your role as governor, former no. attorney general? No. no? But, I, I mean, I've read about it, right? It's an interesting case, and, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it all plays out in, in the court of law. But... Um, I won't be I won't be watching it. Okay. Um, you know, but we'll we'll see how that goes. I I got to be watching other stuff. You know, yeah. I got to be what what are we doing on transportation? You know, how are we fixing infrastructure? Housing. That's my big thing. We need more housing in the state. I want to build 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 more housing mm -hmm. because rents are too high, people can't afford down payments, and I don't want people like we thinking about going to New Hampshire. Yeah. I want them staying here in Massachusetts. I want our businesses growing here in Massachusetts. That's why we did tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Right? Um but we also need more housing because, you know, right now it's it's too expensive. So those are the things I'm I'm really focused on. But I love I love coming on. Oh, What's that? I, I, is that a flyover? I think that's a flyover. Start of the race. Oh, look mm. at that. That's, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. It never, so, get, cool. never gets old. Fly, it really doesn't. Right? Yeah. It's right. awesome. And right. nice work with the foundation, Greg, as always. This is the day, too, you know, yeah, one well, Boston. Are, you're welcome to come back. We have a big party here. So if you want to, if you're walking back through, come by and say hello to everybody. All right. A lot we'll of do. voters in here. A lot of voters. Well, a lot of voters. Yeah. yeah. Great Keep, to see you guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah. in Boston. All right. Okay. All right, Wiggy. We you. Stop you. With going to H-Town. Wiggy with the no tax. He there thinks he's, go. Gonna, he's always going to pay taxes. Just tell him he's always going to pay taxes. I'm going to H-Town. doesn't matter where he lives. You just take care of your mother. Don't leave your mother.